Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everyone. This is Dale. Thank you for joining me on the Word Podcast today. Uh, in a little different location, so it may sound a little different. Uh, but I did want to pick up a couple of the verses that we've been examining in the Gospel of John. We're in the seventh chapter. <clears throat> if you remember the last time, we saw that the Jews were absolutely amazed at the teaching that Jesus was giving. And they were amazed because they said, how did this man become so learned when he's never studied, <laughs> when he's never been educated, <clears throat> when he's never been taught? According to you know which translation you read, and Jesus knew what they were saying about him. You know they were wondering how in the world did he become like this, and there was no thought, no concept. It never crossed their mind that perhaps the fact that he had been with God, that he spent time with God, is the reason that he knew things. Uh, we do the same thing today. We have academic preparation that we have uh, for those who lead within the body of Christ. And you know what? That's fine. I understand. I went through many, many years of that myself. But I tell you what, the official academic thing is nothing compared uh, to the actual time that I spent thereafter. Okay? And so I, I don't want to paint too broad a brush and say, okay, this is evil, totally evil all the time, and this is totally good all the time. No, no. What we see is that it's the time with the Lord that's important. And Jesus shows us. So let's look at it in John chapter 7. Uh, let's pick it up, verse 16. So Jesus answered them and said, My teaching is not mine, but his who sent me. So you see Jesus reiterating this over and over and over, that he sent from the Father, that he teaches what the Father teaches that he speaks what the father speaks he does what the father does so he's telling them from the very beginning <coughs> excuse me <coughs> that green stuff's in the air again right <laughs> he says my teaching is not mine but it is the from the one who sent me now verse 17 he continues if anyone is willing to do his will he will know of the teaching whether it is of god or whether I speak from myself. So he's telling them, oh, you're wondering how I learned this? You're questioning whether I'm just speaking and puffing myself up or speaking of myself when I say that I'm speaking of God? And he tells them what to do. If you're willing to do his will, if you're willing to do the will of the Father, then you will know whether the teaching is from me or if it's from God. And he's saying this to the Jews, particularly the Jewish leadership. So he's really drawing in the question, their motivation, drawing the question what they are doing. Because see, everything they were doing was from their own will, from their own self-will, their own desires of their own flesh. And he says, if you're willing to do the will of the Father, then you'll know whether the teaching is from Father or from me. Verse 18 continues. He who speaks from himself seeks his own glory, but he who is seeking the glory of the one who sent him, he is true, and there is no unrighteousness in him. And so he's speaking what will happen of the one who uh, is seeking the will of God, but he's also speaking of himself, <clears throat> that if you seek the glory of the one who sends you, then you're going to be speaking what is true, and there's no unrighteousness in him or in you. But if you speak of himself, then he seeks his own glory. You know, I think this right here is one of the biggest uh, issues that we have within the professing body of Christ today. Even among true believers, it's really easy to get caught up in this and to uh, seek your own glory and to speak your own glory, particularly if God is blessing and is doing some great things in the midst of the body. It's easy to seek their own glory. Uh, how often do we hear, uh, and it is an innocent phrase, okay, so often, but sometimes it's not. How often do we hear, oh, come to my church, oh, come to our church, or 
come see what's going on here, what's happening here. And we're really seeking our own glory rather than seeking the glory of the one who sent us. Or how often do we hear, and folks, I do, I hear this so often, in those uh, that are sadly in leadership positions in churches, that they're seeking their own glory. I mean, I, I know of situations and in individuals to where you can't even have a conversation because every sentence draws to something in their life. You know, everything, even to the point <laughs> to where it's like, uh, oh, yeah, well, I knew that. Uh, oh, yeah, I was, I was about to say that. Or, I, I, yeah, I know that. I, that's what I thought. It's always that type of thing. And it's such a pattern of behavior that they're totally unaware of it because everything is oriented around seeking their own glory. And the Lord says, the one who seeks and speaks from himself is the one who's seeking his own glory. But the one who's seeking the glory of the one who sent him, he's true, and there's no unrighteousness in him. So again, the greater understanding of what Jesus is saying right here is that he's declaring, hey, I've been sent from the Father. What I'm saying is true. There's no unrighteousness in me. The ones that are seeking their own glory, <laughs> they're getting their reward right there, okay? They're not seeking the glory of the one who has sent them. Anyway, <clears throat> John chapter 7, that's verses 15 through 18. Go check that out and see what the Lord reveals to you. Again, I'm Dale. Thank you so much for being with me, and I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.